Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today, we're looking at the wide world of open source game dev from game engines to art tools to animation to audio to visuals, and on we go. I want to start things off with game engines. Now, you're going to notice there's some things missing from this list. Some things that you think should be on here, like the default game engine, aren't simply because they're not technically open source, but they're still great choices. We're going to start off with the daddy in the open source space, and that is the Godot game engine, available at godotengine.org. This is a fully functioning 2D and 3D game engine. If you don't know where to start, you want to use an open source game engine, and you've got no other idea, start with Godot. Now, I'm going to go through these pretty quick, because i got a lot of things to cover. After the Godot game engine, we have the Stride game engine. Now, this started life as a commercial C-sharp powered game engine from uh, Silicon Studios in Japan. It was was eventually open sourced and then renamed to the Stride engine. Uh, there's a lot more development going on with it recently. This is the most Unity-like fully open source option you are going to find out there. And then there is O3DE. Now, O3DE started life as CryEngine, became Lumberyard, is now O3DE. Uh, this one has a huge number of large consortiums behind it, uh, definitely lagging behind Godot in terms of popularity and in maturity. Uh, but there is, again, a lot of resources behind this, and this could be the AAA open source game engine. I'll be interested to see how this one ultimately turns out. And then finally, we have GDevelop. This is a no-code 2D style game engine. Again, there are a ton of options out there that are source code available, things like Flax and the Unreal Engine. Uh, and then, of course, you have almost open source, like I mentioned with Default. But as far as 2D open source game engines, GDevelop is kind of one of the more predominant options out there. So if you're looking for something, especially if you're looking for something that doesn't require coding, GDevelop may be a good pickup for you. Now, we also have another world where there are a ton of free options out there, and that is the world of frameworks. Here, for example, if you want to work with C++, you have SDL, SFML, Allegro, Raylib, Cocos 2DX, and Orcs, just to name a few. Uh, C Sharp, you have Monogame and FNA, a bunch of HTML projects such as Babylon JS and the Play Canvas, 3JS, Phaser, all great choices. Rust has Bevy and Firox. Firox is actually technically a game engine and could have been included on this list in its own entry, but it just wasn't. Uh, Dragon Ruby is not open source, but the majority of what you see on this list are actually open source options. So when it comes to more low level stuff, framework stuff, there is a absolute ton of choices out there. Now moving on to the art world. Well, we're going to start off obviously with Blender. If you've never heard of it before, Blender is an open source free 3D application. This is also a non-linear video editor, uh, special effects composting tool, uh, compositing tool, I mean, uh, a 2D graphics tool via Grease Pencil, etc. It is just the uber do-it-all open source graphics application, and it has come a very, very long way in the last couple of years. And it's threatening the likes of Max and Maya for user base. Blender is a huge deal if you've never heard of it, go check it out. Uh, after Blender, we have Krita. Uh, if you want to do sketching or drawing, Krita is one of the best options out there. Uh, we also have GIMP. GIMP is more for general image manipulation. Uh, this is kind of like the closest thing we've got to an open source Photoshop. Uh, we've got Inkscape, which is probably the closest thing we have to an open source, op open, source open source Adobe Illustrator. It is a vector graphics application. Uh, next up, we have Material Maker. Now, this one is closest to Substance Designers, used for creating 3D material. Materials, and it is freaking awesome. And it has come a very long way. It's actually written using the Godot game engine. Their website does not do it a hell of a lot of justice, but if you're looking for procedural material generation, Material Maker is an awesome tool you should definitely check out. Uh, on the same topic, we also have Armor Lab. Armor Lab is for creating, uh, again, textures using... Um, a variety of different kind of AI methods sort of thing. Uh, it is a, another material generator out there uh, it's from the same guy who makes Armory Paint, also the Armory Engine. Uh, this is, uh, you're going to have to build it yourself, but this is a 3D painting application. The closest thing that I can think of is uh, Substance Painter. It's a subset of what Substance Painter does, but it enables you to paint your images directly on top of 3D models. Very cool application in that regard. Uh, it doesn't have binaries provided. A few of these are like that, where you're going to have to build it yourself if you want to check it out. Uh, but Armor Paint is a very cool application if you are looking to do 3D texturing directly on 3D models. Uh, Another thing about 3D models is we have Sculpt GL. Now, this one isn't actually being developed anymore, but it is really cool. The author of it has actually moved on to doing Nobad Sculpt, an iOS and Android-based sculpting application, which is very, very cool, by the way. Uh, but he did create this free sculpting application. It looks a lot like a light version of ZBrush, so you can actually sculpt. This is available as an application, and in this case, it's actually running directly in my browser. 
So if you are looking for a free and open source sculpting option, uh, this Sculpt GL is your best choice out there. Uh, next up, we have Pixelorama. This is sort of like a uber tool for pixel art uh, generation. It has a ton of functionality. It's very cool. Actually built on top of the Godot game engine as well. Uh, it's definitely one of those ones to check out. If you're doing pixel art, this is a tool you should definitely consider adding to your repertoire, especially because, again, it is free and open source. Uh, we have also have Piskel. Piskel is an online editor. Um, it, it's not been developed for a very long time, but you basically create pixel art directly in your browser. Uh, and the uh, source code is available for this guy. You've got layer support, you've got animation support, fixed color palettes, and so on. Uh, another one that is super popular is AS Ace Sprite or ASC Sprite or Ask Pirate, depends on how you want to call it. Uh, this one is one of the de facto pixel art image animation tools out there. Uh, it's a very cool application. Now, binaries are not provided, but source code is available. There's also a fork of it from when he stopped providing binaries called Libra Sprite. Uh, this one is, again, it's gone in a different direction, but this is, uh, again, fully open source, and this one does provide binaries. So if you're looking for sprite tools, you definitely have some great options out there. Another option is Low Specs Pixel Editor, uh, a very simple browser-based fat grid paint uh, kind of application again runs in your browser another cool thing from low spec by the way is they have this really cool fixed palette uh selection on their website a huge number of palettes available so if you're looking to work with color palettes you want to check out low spec as well uh then in the animation side of things we got actually a surprising number of animation tools one of which is synfig uh, it's again 2d animation tool for windows mac and linux uh, you can see kind of stuff it does right there. I've done a video on all of these, by the way, if you want to learn more about them. Another alternative for open source is the uh, Pixel 2D animation tool, or sorry, Pencil 2D animation tool. You can actually do vector and um, raster graphics in it as well, available on all major platforms as well. Uh, and then we've got Open Tunes. Now, Tunes was... Uh, used by Studio Ghibli uh, for a number of their things. They open sourced it out. Uh, it is uh, available. It's a massive tool for professional quality uh, animation. It's not a, the, the most simple thing you've ever seen, but uh, like inking and coloring and all that stuff is available in OpenTunes. Super complex application, but definitely one you should consider checking out. And I have done a video on that one as well. Uh, then we got Spooky Ghost. Uh, I believe this is another Godot powered tool uh, for creating procedural animation from your sprites. Very different workflow on this one. I have done a video on it as well if you're interested in checking that one out. Actually, there it is. My video is embedded right there. Uh, and then we've got Envy. And I've done a video of this one as well. It's an open source 2D animation package for doing vector and raster animations as well. And that is the art side of things. And now we edit up with the audio side. So here we have the, the, the daddy, I guess, for audio amp. Uh, editing, you got to, uh, you know, acquire a waveform or edit raw data. Uh, Audacity is pretty much the go-to tool. Uh, tons of people are using Audacity for exactly this stuff. I think the company behind it got kind of scummy, but this is still a free and open source project if you want to check it out. Uh, next up, after Audacity, we have LMMS. This is a DAW uh, cross-platform for creating music. I have done a video on this one again. If you want to check it out, you've got uh, a variety of uh, MIDI implementations there. You've got a number of plugins for it available as well. It is completely open source. You can compose music on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Uh, a number of instruments are included, especially a lot of things like the old school Nintendo or Game Boy chips, Commodore 64, SID, and so on. So if you want to create kind of like retro game music, LMMS is a great DAW for that kind of stuff. Uh, another major open source DAW is Ardor. I have never actually used Ardor uh, personally. It's probably why I'm saying it wrong. Uh, this is, uh, again, available for major platforms. It is very easy to get up and running on Linux and Mac OS. It was a real pain in the butt to build it on uh, Windows in the past, and there's a time-limited, or at least there used to be a time-limited version of it that you could check out. But this is probably the most popular open source DAW out there. Um, so if you're looking for just a you know an all-around music creation mixing solution, our door could be worth checking out for you. Uh, next up, we have Q Tractor. This is an Audi. Uh, Audio and MIDI multi-track sequencer. So it's kind of like a DAW light. You can see the kind of stuff that it does right there. Again, I've never actually used this one personally. Uh, I, I'm not big on the audio side of things. So I'm mostly referring you to stuff and you can do your own research on uh, the audio side of things. Next up, we have Muse Sequencer. Again, another open source DAW that's available. It's under the GPL license. I, I think this one is all major platforms as well. 
So you can see the, the kind of stuff that it provides. It does have support for standard plugins like VST and so on. Uh, so if you are looking for another open source option in the DAW world, uh, Muse Sequencer is an option. Uh, we also have Bespoke. This is a modular DAW for uh, Mac, Windows, and Linux. Uh, very different approach to how things work. I did a video on this one if you want to go ahead and check it out, uh, but it is available uh, for free and it is open source as well. And then this one is a little bit on the weird side. This is a notation package for actually doing like music on this level. Uh, it's called Muse Score. Uh, so this is the world's most popular notation app out there. I'm not sure how much you would be using this for, um, if you, unless you're developing notation. I don't think there's a lot of uses for uh, game development, but it is an interesting audio app that fills a particular niche. So I figured I would definitely mention it. Uh, and then we have another up and coming uh, doc called Zerhythm. I actually checked this one out in video in the past as well. It's got a very intuitive editing process. Um, and again, another choice to go ahead and check out. This does have VST2 and 3 support, etc. It's it's a very interesting project to be um, very, again, interesting to see where this ultimately ends up. But that is Zerhythm, and that is it, ladies and gentlemen, for all of the uh, open-sourced uh, game engines, audio solutions, animation, drawing, 3D graphics, etc. that I could come up with off the top of my head. No doubt there are more, but hopefully I introduced you to something new today. Uh, if you've got additional suggestions for fully open source uh, game development applications, let me know in the comments down below. And hopefully you learned something. That's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.